Hi, I'm Natalie Porter from Immaculate Confections and I'm here today to show you the brand new cutters that I've been working on with the wonderful guys at FMM. Here they are. They are multi-use petal and leaf cutters. Um, you can see the shape that there's five in the set and they are going to be so useful because they truly are multi-use. I'm going to show you today how to make a beautiful fascination dahlia with them but you could also use them for all sorts of leaves, ruscus, eucalyptus, lilies, sunflowers, astrolomerias, succulents, so many things I'm having to reference our packaging to get the list right. So I hope you enjoy the tutorial you're about to see. If you have any questions, drop us a line and we'd be happy to help. Right, so we're going to make this little fella, which I can pop very carefully, just there. Um, genuinely is pink and black and they have black leaves and they're awesome for it. So we are gonna use a daisy cutter. So I have somewhere, it was right there. So I've got an FMM one here, it's about 30 mil wide. We need one of those, which actually if I hold it like that, you can see the shape, because I realize it's on white. Um, and we need some yellow for that. We need some black for the center, which I've colored up. And then we are going to use the second size of petal to make all the petals for this one. And that's from the new um, multi-use petals and leaves set. So we'll start with the middle, which requires a tea light, a piece of 24 gauge wire, and some tweezers. And these are nice pointy round nozzles. Um, so I've coloured this with our black food colouring. I did it earlier just so that I didn't make a mess of my hands basically, and you want to start off with a little ball that is about one and a half centimetres ish in diameter, like so. I'm going to light my candle and hopefully not set fire to everything. The reason for the candle is that we're going to use that to heat up the wire so that it sticks in the paste, A, immediately, um, but B, it will be a really nice solid connection in there. So I'm just going to bend a hook like so, as you can see there. I will heat it up, and then when you push it in, you're looking for a little puff of smoke. If you get a puff of smoke, then it's hot enough, and you know that you're gonna get a nice connection there. Oh, hang on, drop the ball. So we'll go in, and then once it's in, twist it round a little bit, because that just means that it sort of, the hook goes in, you twist it, and it's gonna sort of engage with the paste and not come out. So I don't need that anymore. And then we're just going to come, and do you see that I'm pinching all around there, which means we pull off quite a big chunk, but that is absolutely fine. But we're going to leave ourselves with a really nice ball on the end that is tapered at the bottom. Let me just shove this in there. I'm just going to pop a little bit of petal base on my fingers because I'm sticking. We'll just give that a nice twist so that we've got a good smooth edge. Remove the last of the excess there, and that is our ball. And having glued it on, it's sticking nicely. Oh, can I have some of that actually? Because I'm going to need it. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to go get a wet bit. Hmm? I'm going to go get a wet bit. Oh. The washing the bed. That's very kind of you. Um, so once we've done that, I'm just going to take my tweezers and I'm just going to pinch all over the top of the ball. And you only need to do it on the top really because once we put the yellow bits on, you can't see the sides, so there's no point in sort of wasting our time pinching the side. So it's just that very top bit. This wire is getting in the way. And in fact, Chris, do you want to zoom in a little bit on that? Yes, yes I will. So when you do this, don't be frightened of pinching a nice chunk. We want a really textured surface on there. something like that. Now what I would normally do is make this, then make all of my pink petals, by which time this will have had enough time to dry that I can come and put the yellow bits on. But just so that you guys can see everything in sequence, here is one I made earlier that has had a little while to dry so that I can add the daisy bits. 
pigment and polystyrene. So for the daisy bits, they are eventually, they will turn into this. So you can see that we're using those daisy cutters to create the sort of stamen parts around the centre there, but without needing um, to actually get involved in fiddly stamens and so on. Do you know what? No matter how big your desk is, there's never enough space to put everything down. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of flour paste. I only need a wee bit. And I'm doing my usual mixture of some squires and some ultra fine there. But of course, you can use whichever flour paste is your favourite and that works for you. And I'm just going to knead that up and we just need to colour it yellow. So I'm using our Immaculate Confections um, yellow food colouring, which as you will see, is very concentrated and it is a lovely, lovely bright yellow, so you only need a little bit. You can see how far that went. And actually we could go, we can go a little bit yellower than that, so I'll add another little piece. And it is, it's just a tiny wee bit that you need there. And I've got a little bit of corn flour if I need it, which I will begin rolling this out. We're going to um, shape it, cut it, manipulate it quite a lot with this. So don't roll it too, too thin because it will just disintegrate on you. <laughs> like that, it's all right. I only need to cut six little daisies, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to pop some corn flour on the back because it has been awful sticky. There we go. Right. And then I want six of these daisy shapes. And I will in fact, I'm just going to use a ball tool there to pop those out. And I think I'm just going to have enough paste. Just about. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> that will do. Right. So always remember, if you're doing flour paste, you just want to pop it into a little bag so that it doesn't dry out on you. And then... going to take either a knife or a cutting wheel or whatever you prefer and we just need to snip up each of these little petals on the daisies into two. Right, there is one and as I say you can do it do it with either. I don't know I often change my mind sometimes I think it's quicker and easier to do with a cutting wheel other times I think it's better with a knife. So go with whatever works for you guys. Nope. Do we have any questions, anybody? Uh, no, I think they're all very intently watching me. Okay. Currently. Cool. As I say, this bit's not terribly exciting, so bear with me, guys. But if I'd have done this earlier, it would have all dried out and then we wouldn't be able to do the next bit. So. There we are. I might swap back to my knife. Nearly there. 
Oh, Diane's asking how big the centre was. So for the centre, I started off with a ball about one and a half centimetres in diameter. Do I have you those. Use any um, yes, you can. There's no reason why not. Um, as long as it's a similar size. So this one's about 30 mil. So that would be all right. So we can use these. We're going to use all of these straight away now. So we're just going to take our ball tool. And you can be fairly rough with it. We just want to come and stretch out all those little bits of our daisies. Try not to stick the bits you just cut back together again, but if it happens, it's not the end of the world. Because we've got quite a few here that we're working with. And you can see I'm not being terribly precise, we're just stretching them, thinning them, giving them a little bit of shape. Like so. Um, and then we'll take some glue. Now, because I've been working on all of those... Um, deep burgundy dahlias there that you saw before my glue is more than a bit red but it's okay <laughs> that's not going to be a problem um, for this and I was going to pop some glue in the middle and just a little bit up the petals there I'll do that again oh, for this one In fact, let's do three of them and then I'll add the glue to the others afterwards just so they don't dry out. Where's my middle? Here it is. Okay. So I'm just going to slide it up like so. And then we're just going to pull on them just a little bit to bring them up. Oh, I've lost one there. Never mind. Bring them up the side of the centre. And can you see that they are just about like it's made a little claw and it is just about on the top of the ball there. If I hold it just at this angle and twist it around, you should be able to see. And then we're basically just going to do the same thing again another five times. You do want to try and sort of cover the ball with the petals, but to be honest, because we're putting so many on, don't worry too, too much about how and where you're positioning each one because they'll get covered eventually. And then I'll pop some glue onto our three that are remaining. And again, it's just a little bit up the middle of the petals and we're just going to repeat the same thing but when we get to these last three can you see I'm not pulling them up so much because we want these ones to start sticking out if you look at the center there you can see that we've got some that are sort of tight and closed in the middles and others that are a little bit more open is the word that I'm looking for and you can see that I'm not pushing them on anymore because you want to leave those outer ones sort of sticking out let's grab this last one on there broke a bit off never mind nobody will ever know I'm just gonna pop a little bit corn flour on my fingertips because I'm sticking to everything there we are. And then you can use just a good old pokey stick to just bring those bits out. And that is it. Um, and we're going to pop that aside to dry and hopefully by the time I've made all the petals and stuff this will be ready to go. But you can see there, once it's dusted up, it's a very effective way of doing a flower centre without, as I said, using all of the, um, you know, getting involved in stamens and, and doing those bits and pieces. So that is our middle. I will now 
make some petals. So each one of these, you need 16 petals. There's eight on this first row and then another eight on the row underneath. I'm not gonna sit here and make all 16. Um, so I'll just do a couple as an example and then I've got some that we can dust and then I've got a bunch that I made earlier that we'll tape together, just to save on the drying time there. And for the color, I am just using our magenta food coloring, which again, it is a, it's a really nice shade of pink. And I'm not just saying that because it's out, it genuinely is a really nice shade of pink. So again, half and half squires and ultra fine there, or more or less half and half. But like I said, go with whatever flower paste you prefer. There's so many on the market. Different people like different ones for different reasons. So whatever your preference is. And for this, we just want a medium pink, something like that because we've got some gorgeous bright pink dusts to go on it as well. Um, and we want to make our petals pale enough that we have space for the dust without it ending up too dark. So again, these are really strong colors, so you just need a little bit. Like so. Move that out of the way and I'm going to put the lid on my colour so that I don't spill it everywhere and just clean this a little bit there. So I'm going to roll my paste out and the thing here is that we are going to use the ball tool to stretch and shape this and we are going to use a veining stick to add veins. So you absolutely do not want to roll this too thin or you're not going to have enough thickness there to be able to manipulate it with the veining stick and the ball tools. Because um, it's super fresh, it is sticky, so I'm just corn flouring it. That'll do. And then for this one, I am using the second size from the new set of cutters, which a wiser person would have written down what size that actually is. <laughs> but I think my able assistant will be able to look that up for me. So what size? It's the second biggest. I don't know why you're getting up, you just need to look on the website. <laughs> right, I've cut three. I'm going to cut a fourth one so we have a spare. Um, right. So, the first thing we are going to do is use our veining stick to make it the shape we want it to be and add the veins. So can you see there, if we sort of compare and contrast this one to that one, we're going to widen it slightly. The size of the second biggest one is 6.2 by 1.9 centimetres. Okay, so second smallest then. I mean, it, well, I, I never know, when, when you say biggest or smallest, like which end of the scale are we starting the at? The second biggest, second smallest, sorry, is 4.2 by 1.3. Right, so it's about 4.2 centimetres long. That's the one we're using. It's the second smallest. Right, so you're going to use your veining stick. Now, a veining stick, which we do have available on our website if you've not used one before, it's tapered and it has got these ridges on it and it's the ridges that put the veins in. But when you then dust it, you get the lovely detail of having the veins on your petals. Because it's tapered, you'll often move it in an arc rather than a straight line. And what I tend to do is start in the middle and go up on the petal, back to the middle and come down on the petal. Because if you try to go all the way from bottom to top, quite often the petal just ends up rolling around the stick and that's annoying. Um, we want nice deep veins and we want everything to be quite, we want the change we're making here to be quite dramatic, which is why I'm doing it on my hardboard rather than on the petal pad. So we'll start in the middle and roll up, back to the middle and roll down 
And can you see how I've used the veining stick there to change the shape of the petal? And that is what we're trying to do. So again, the middle and rock down, middle and rock up. And that's why you mustn't cut these too thin to start with. If you cut these paper thin at the beginning, you can't stretch them that much because they'll, they'll break before they stretch. So again. So doing it this way, you will find that not every single petal is exactly the same, but that's totally fine because in nature, things aren't all identical and precisely uniform. So go with that. And can you see where I'm holding it and where I'm putting the pressure is in that middle bit of the petal there, which is what we want to stretch. So it takes a little bit of practice, but this is a, a super versatile technique that you can apply to so many different things. Um, now, this is where <laughs> making pink petals and having a pink petal pad is kind of annoying. So what I'm actually going to do... I'll do them on here and then I'll show you on something else too. We're going to take our ball tool and just come up and around the side there and up and around this side and then in the point there just draw it out to make the top a little bit pointy. Is that showing up all right the pink on the pink? Yeah. Because the one thing that I can do is grab <laughs> Would you believe there is not a rapid rose pad within reach? Yeah, I, know, I can put it, I can do it on there just so you can see. So we're just coming around the sides there and then pop, popping a little bit of a point into the top. Like so. And then each petal, you're just going to take it and pinch the top together like that. Oh, nope. oh, he's sticking to me. There we go. So I've just pinched the top together. And if you find that the top doesn't want to stay pinched, just put the tiniest little bit of glue or water on it, and then that little pinch will stay beautifully. Because that is what gives us those lovely little peaks in the petals there. So again, pinch there. Oh, just they're sticky underneath. And pinch there. And then, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to attach these to some 28 gauge wire. And I tend to cut my wires into quarters. Oh, that's a terrible quarter, but anyway, you get the idea. Um, it's just, it's a nice length. It's not so short that it's difficult to arrange, but then equally it's not so long that you're wasting a ton of wire. What size wire did you say? What size? 28 gauge. Are you taking notes? Yep. And then we just want to make some little twiddles on these wires here. So. I always find it's easier to have your fingers slightly greased up so that they're not sticking to everything. So you're going to dip the wire in some glue, and I tend to just sort of tap it off on my the back of my finger, uh, back of my hand, so it's not swimming in glue. Insert it into a little bit of paste there, and then you're just going to. Twist it down there, like so. I just need to do another three of these quickly. So we'll pop it in there. Again, if you're sticking, go for a little bit of petal base or cornflour on your fingers. Although for this, I prefer petal base because it doesn't dry the paste out. And you're just aiming for these sort of slim little sausages on the wires there, which is one of those things that does become easier the more you do it. So again, a little bit of glue, 
wee sausage. Insert the wire. And bring that down there. And I'll just do this one, last one, sorry. There we are. So again, pop it in. Give it a twist. That is sticking terribly. Okay. And then pop those on there and I'm going to pop a little bit of a smidgen, a tiny smidgen of glue on those twists. Position the petals and you want, in terms of the length of the twiddle, you always want it to be about half to two thirds the length of your petal. And then you just need to press it on. And I tend to use the side of my little finger for that because I find that you, you don't sort of have the power in your little finger to squash everything, if you know what I mean. So you get a nice even pressure to, to make sure that it is pressed on there. Oh, it wants to fall off because the glue pot was unbalancing it. I'll do these last two. May as well because I've cut them out. And again, side of my little finger, like so. And you can, I mean, if you want to pinch the bottoms on, you can do, but the thing is that when these are put together in the flower, you can't see the base of the petals anyway, so it's not, there's no need. Um, and then we're going to dry them on some spoons. So I have a bajillion plastic spoons. Um, and what I tend to do, can you zoom out a bit? So if I'm making loads of petals, it's just it's a little tray from oh, somewhere and a bit of grippy mat. These ones are plastic um, and it just means that they don't move around too much because I've done this before without the grip mat using spoons out of the kitchen drawer. You pick the tray up and of course the, they, they just slide. <laughs> um, and how you want to position these on, the, so if, you, if we look at this, if I hold it to the side, don't know if you can see there but the petals are slightly concave so if, if you've got the middle of if the middle of the flower is here the petals are going this way a little bit they're not curling up but they're curling away and the easiest way to do that is to put the petal upside down in the spoon and just press very gently on the back of it there to bend the wire so do you see now that the petal do you want to zoom back in a bit Can you see now that the petal's got that slightly concave shape on it? So we're just going to pop each of our petals into its own spoon. So it's upside down, just a gentle little press there, like so, so that you get that nice shape. And the last one. So again, we've just got that nice curvy shape on it. And then we'll pop those aside to dry. And with these ones, I'm going to leave them like overnight so that they're totally dry. <laughs> Sarky much. Right, look, I'm going to make one leaf very quickly. Um, so I've done these with black paste. Let me grab a little bit of that. So dahlia leaves, from, from what I could see, aren't the most exciting or specific shape of things. These ones are exciting because they're black, um, but other than that, they weren't life-changing. Um, this is a cutter from the FMM Creative Leaf Set, which is kind of the perfect shape for dahlia leaves, as it happens. Um, if you didn't have one of these, you could just use a very big... Um, rose leaf cutter would do um, or indeed you could hand cut them so I've just got one of those I'm just going to pop him on here oh 
pop him on there. I'm just going to go round the outside to give that just a little bit of shape. That's it. Um, and then all I did for these was just use a Dresden tool to come down and just, you know, mark veins in like a leaf. And that was sufficient. Um, and these I'll put onto a little bit of 26 gauge wire just because they're fairly big leaves. So we don't want it to be, uh, we need something that's um, strong enough. And I'll do the same thing. So a little bit of glue on there and I'll make a twiddle. And I'm going to make this a little bit longer. And you can see it's a little bit thicker as well, just so that it's slightly stronger to, um, and I do know that's not a real word before anyone says it. <laughs> so it's slightly stronger to hold this up. Uh, it's because, do you remember the so petty flu adverts of the 90s to make yes. your bones grow stronger? Make bones grow stronger, yes, indeed. So same thing, pop it on there, press it down. You can pinch that bit close. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue. Just there, can you see that shining? Yeah, because yeah. then that way, when you pinch that, it will let itself be pinched much easier, except that's just disintegrated. Do you know what? Let me show you how to fix this. I did a lot of this last night. <laughs> so I'm actually just going to get my little scissors and just cut away the part that I've mangled altogether. And now what I have is a not so broken looking, slightly smaller leaf. That's cool. We can go with that. And this are well suited to being dried on a piece of flower drying foam. Alternatively known as shape shaping foam. So that's the leaf, which means we can do the fun bit, which is the dusting. Oh, did you uh, mix that black? Or did you give that a black? Um, I mixed that up, so I used our black food colouring, um, which is really, really black. And I just I did it earlier on, just so that I didn't um, I didn't make a mess. I don't know, what it was. so that I didn't make a mess with my hands. Here we are. So yeah, it was with our black there. I am using some black, some burgundy, some bright yellow, and my all-time favourite violet pink. Um, so we have a whole range of colours. I think we currently, the pastes and gels and the dusts and the metallics, we're up to 40 something now, I think. Um, which, you know, blows my tiny mind a little bit yeah. on occasion. <laughs> but these are the ones that we are gonna use. So let's start off. We want some black and some burgundy. And all I'm gonna do with this is just use it very carefully, just, just a tiny bit, because a little bit goes a long way, to just blacken up the center there. And then we're just gonna add a tiny little bit of burgundy on top. And I'm just gonna sort of dab it on, because then that just gives us the sort of, I don't know if you guys can see it on the video, but it gives a really nice rich deep colour to everything because you've kind of got that mixture and then we will do the yellow so I'm gonna load my brush up really well for this and the reason for that is that all these little bits here are super super delicate so I don't want to have to scrub with the brush at all to get the colour on there I want to be able to just very, very lightly touch them and have the colour transfer, because otherwise they're just going to break. So that's us making that a brighter yellow. Now, I'll be honest, in nature, they are really, really yellow. 
I felt like these were just a bit too yellow. It, it looked harsh next to the pink, let's say. So I actually did just the smidginiest of smidgens of burgundy. And can you see that I'm just sort of, <laughs> ah, I'm gonna say this because it will make, make me giggle if nothing else. I'm just tickling the top of the stones there. <laughs> with the burgundy yes, to put just a tiny little bit of of colour onto them like so yes, um, lots, of lovely, uh, lots of people leaving some lovely comments about the colour ah cool you know I'm like I can't I can't work read and talk at the same time <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it just it just gives it a, a little more sort of richness to the, the colours and the tones there Pop that to one side. And then our petals, it is just the violet pink on it. Now, I am obsessed with this colour. Those of you who are regular with us on uh, a Sunday night will know about me and my violet pink obsession. Or violent pink, as we renamed it at Halloween, didn't we? Um, it's a gorgeous colour. It's one of the... So it's non-toxic and non-edible. So all that means is... It's not for eating, but it isn't poisonous, so it can come into food contact. So in other words, it is perfect for, um, it's perfect for making sugar flowers that will be removed from the cake before you eat it. Um, and of course, if you were to be sitting there eating sugar flowers, it's not, it's not the dust you'd be worrying about. It'd be the wires and the polystyrene and stuff. So just so that you guys know. Um, so I am just going to take a little bit of the dust there. And I'm just kind of working it on the paper so that the dust is nicely in the bristles instead of on the bristles. And working from the bottom to the top of the petal. We're just going to come on. And it's these nice light brush strokes. The lightness of the brush stroke will make it go a little bit streaky, which is what we want. And then we're going to concentrate the dust at the base of the petal here. Now, when you do this, most of so the petals on this one got dusted twice because the centre is actually quite big. So when you have that like that, to be able to see the darker bit of pink at the bottom of that petal, you need the darkness to come up about halfway. Um, otherwise you won't be able to see it. So just bear that in mind, even though it feels like you're putting far too much colour on, but you do, you want it to come up about halfway, like so. So I'll do, I've got a couple more here that I can dust. So again, a little bit of colour just to start with, bottom to top, you just get that nice streaky effect. And then we're going to come and concentrate the colour at the bottom of the petal there. Sorry, I'm struggling to keep talking and do this. I think I just think it's just I get into it. That's the problem. Like so. So again, just bottom to top. This will be the last one, guys, and we'll tape them together. And then concentrate the colour at the base there. Only one, is there only one, one dust that's in the, uh, one of the sets that is non-edible, like a crafter? Um, I tell you what, I'll answer that. Oh, in just, no, sorry, give me a second, because I know what they are. I'm just going to put the lid on that, because it's a new one, so it's really full. <laughs> so if I spill that, it will make a, a total mess. But you can see, like, glorious colour, this. Absolutely adore it, and I use it on everything. Um, so if you want to swap back while I tidy up, I can do um, brush and dust information. Uh, so the brushes we sell on our website, there are dusting brushes. You can buy them individually or they come as a set of four with um, four different sizes in them. Um, we've always got really, really good reviews on them. Like, That's I don't want to just sit here and tell you like, oh, they're fantastic, because obviously I'm going to say that, but we always get um, really good reviews on the brushes. Um, the thing that that's particularly nice with them that we did on purpose 
um, was that they've got lovely white bristles so you can see what colour they are. So when you have a bunch of them, you get this nice colourful brushes. Um, and I do have a bit of a brush problem, I will gladly admit that. So you'll find those on the website. Should we tape it together? Yeah. Let's tape it together. So I'm going to use um, black tape, which I think is my second favourite thing, maybe. I don't know, there's something nice about black tape. I don't know why. Humour me. Right, so I just want to cut this in half widthways. So I'm just going to wrap it around my fingers, extract my fingers, and then just snip it in half there. And I have got plenty of petals that I made earlier. So I just need to organise very quickly because when I was prepping these, I was slightly lazy and I only put the deep colour on the petals that need to go on the top layer of them because you can't see the other ones. Um, so you, you didn't dust those leaves, the leaves, did you? Because they were just black and just come out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could whack a bit of black dust on it if you want, but to be honest, they're so dark, it wouldn't particularly show up or make too much of a difference. Um, right. So I'll take my centre and we'll get the tape attached to it in the first instance. And we're going to bring the tape right up close underneath there, right underneath the centre. We'll take a petal, bend it back, hold him in place, and do you see here, it's not like this, if I hold it on that side, it's like that, okay, so it's not quite 90 degrees, it's a little bit higher than that, and then we'll wrap the tape round, and I found when I was doing these before, that it was actually easier to sort of do opposites first, like so. I'm not sure if that's a dark or a light petal. Let me grab a different one. So that's sort of north and south, and then I'll do east and west, and then we'll fill in the gaps. So we've made 16 petals in total. And we're going to have a row of eight on top and then a row of eight underneath. And at this point, I just need to fill in the gaps there. And I was about to say something very stupid. <laughs> you have to say it now. <laughs> no, I don't. I was going to say, oh, what, what do you get in between, like, north and east? Well, obviously, it's northeast and so on. <laughs> I, I allow myself at least one a day. You didn't do orienteer in there. Well, Chris, we've been together for nearly 16 years. Do you think I did orienteering? No, I don't think you did. I, I, I think it's plausible you did, but you just were really bad at it. So look, if they move around, you can position them back in place. Wired petals, until you tape in these tails underneath, they will always wibble side to side. So don't worry too, too much, because as soon as we run that tape down, they will stay put and just be careful when you're taping that you don't catch a petal and destroy it accidentally and then we have one more to go there in fact we just need to go in here that's it right so I'm just going to have a look at the top make sure that these are all Managed to put nine petals on there. Hang on. Just not paying attention. Let's pull this one out. There we are. There we go. Now it looks right. I knew there was something wrong there. So we've got the eight petals. Make sure they look in the right place. And then we can just bring that tape down just to help all of these stay in position. So 
So I'll bring the tape up to the top again and we're going to do that second layer of petals. And with these ones, as you can probably guess, you just need to make sure that you put each one in between the petals of the previous row. And you can see that you cannot see the bottom of these this second row at all, which is why I didn't bother too much dusting up the base, there was no need. And there is no particular order to attach them in, so you need to make sure that they are all attached. Right round like that. We need one over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> I need to, I'm not, I'm not, uh, because I'm trying to talk at the same time. <laughs> okay, do you want to take a quiet moment? Yeah, just a second. Everyone chill. Oh, how embarrassing. Can't you no, it's fine. I've got it. Back in the room now. So when, you know, like when you guys make your one. Pay better attention than what I am. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the lesson that we'll take from this today. There we go. So my last little gap is here. Now, one thing that I didn't say that I should have, that I do usually say, is always make sure that you make a couple of spares. When you're doing this, it's so easy. If you drop one or you pull it, or you had one with a little bit of a weakness in it, it's so, so easy to break one. But if you've made a few spares, it's not something that you're gonna need to panic about at all. So I'm just giving these a little shuffle so they're all in the right position, which they are. So now I'll bring my tape all the way down. If you want to add a slightly longer stem to it, you can just take a bit of 20 gauge wire. And I'm just going to splint that in there. And I realise it's sticking out the top, but I'll go over with the tape again in just a moment. I can do this with some full width tape. And then to add a couple of leaves on, so that, that was a, this is a dry one. So I'm just gonna put a little kink in the wire of the leaf there, hold it alongside and bring the tape round. And we can in fact go for another leaf, same deal. Put the little kink in it, hold it alongside and tape round. There we are, and then we'll just bring the tape all the way to the bottom. How embarrassing that I lost count of the petals in the middle there. Yeah, I Not paying attention. That being said, if I had ended up with an extra one or one fewer, I don't think for a second that anybody would have come anywhere near to even noticing. No. So with things like that, like, don't panic. There's, there's no need at all to panic. And there we have another matching, beautiful fascination, fa <laughs> fascination dahlia. I hope you liked the tutorial. And as I said at the beginning of the video, if you have any questions at all, drop us a line and we'll be happy to help. And I hope you guys enjoy using your brand new multi-use petal and leaf cutters from me, Natalie Porter, Immaculate Confections and FMM Sugarcraft.